They've made us laugh, they've made us cry, and some have even made us swoon. Welcome back. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 TV doctors. I have a huge bunion. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. For this list, we're looking at those TV medical doctors who've left an indelible impression on our collective psyche. In addition to being some of our first crushes, there were some that inspired us to earn massive debt by going into med school. You'll want to focus on the neglected food groups, such as the whipped group, the congealed group, and the chocotastic. Number 10, Dr. Perry Cox, Scrubs. Ben, turns out cancer's the kind of ailment that you occasionally want to check up on. He's quick-witted, sarcastic, and sometimes downright mean which makes watching him that much more entertaining. For the love of God, what? It's just, do you think we should be talking about this? For her? She's dead. While we do see him perform his medical duties, the highlights of this caustic character are his no-holds-barred behavior and narcissistic tendencies. What's the matter with you there, Sheila? You look like Maybelline just went belly up. His interactions with JD, which include constantly giving him girls' names, are a highlight of the series. You're having a big day there, Susan. We're not saying we'd like to have him as our doctor, but we sure do like to watch him in action. Ever since I started taking care of your patients, not one of them has died. Number nine, Dr. Derek Shepard, Grey's Anatomy. Dr. Shepard, we should pretend it never happened. What never happened? You sleeping with me last night? Or are you throwing me out this morning? You're an attending, and I'm your intern. Stop looking at me like that. Like what? Dr. Shepard was quickly deemed McDreamy by his female colleagues due to his good looks. And we can see why. You're sexually harassing me. I'm riding an elevator. His on-again, off-again relationship with Meredith Grey. In addition to his run-ins with Miranda Bailey, the show's no-nonsense attending general surgeon, sure make for some entertaining drama. I have not begun to freak out. All right, come on. It doesn't hurt that McDreamy is also a handsome, brilliant doctor. We like watching his bedside manner. Here's the good news. We caught it early enough. We can take care of it very quickly. How? I'm going to install a shunt to drain the fluid. Number eight, Dr. Julius M. Hibbert, The Simpsons. Hello, Dr. Hibbert. Hello, Lisa. Well, we've got a nasty bump on our head, haven't we? Ow, quit it. And a little tiny broken toe. Ow! A clear spoof of the good-natured Dr. Huxtable from The Cosby Show, Dr. Hibbert has made special appearances on the series for more than two decades. This little boy broke his leg, trying to fly like Superman. His gentle chuckle and fairly calm demeanor tend to contrast greatly with the constant turmoil that occurs regularly in Springfield. Do you suffer from diabetes? No. Well, you do now. <laughs> of course, that doesn't mean it's all roses with Dr. Hibbert, since it hasn't quite been confirmed that he even has a medical license. Quit butting in, please. Your IQ is a mere 155, while mine is a muscular 170. I am smart. Much smarter than you. Number seven. Dr. James Kildare, Dr. Kildare. Oh, they didn't get your name downstairs. The doctor is speaking to you. He was a medical professional with a heart of gold, with a lovable curmudgeon for a guide, and a slew of wacky patients. Is it gonna hurt much? Oh. Ah. Based on films from the 30s and 40s, and a radio series from the 50s, the show centered on the relationship between Dr. Kildare and his mentor, Dr. Leonard Gillespie, and how they navigated their roles at Blair General. Viewers watch as Kildare transitions from clueless intern to capable physician, and it's a classic. For Pete's sake, Julie, I'm on duty. Number six, Dr. Fraser Crane, Cheers and Fraser. I was here a psychiatrist. You know what it's like to listen to people prattling on endlessly about their mundane lives. Audiences were first introduced to pompous psychiatrist Dr. Fraser Crane through the character's appearances in Cheers. But he eventually landed a spin-off that lasted for over a decade and moved him from Boston to Seattle. A student of Sigmund Freud, Fraser is often seen quoting his hero. Come in. Dr. Crane. Dr. Sigmund Freud. My goodness, it's quite an honor. Able to provide answers to a plethora of peculiar problems from the comfort of his radio show, Dr. Crane has less luck solving his own issues. <laughs> oh, what a relief. I've been wringing my hands over nothing. I mean, it's okay. All I want to do is have sex with my dead mother. <laughs> Number five, Dr. Leonard H. McCoy, Star Trek, the original series. 
Well, Bones, all I can suggest is you open up a maternity ward. Referred to on the series as Bones, Dr. McCoy serves as Chief Medical Officer on the Starship Enterprise under James T. Kirk. He's opinionated but not brass, wise but not boring, and he has a love-hate relationship with Spock that pits Captain Kirk in the middle of a bromance triangle. Spock, I don't know too much about these little tribbles yet, but there is one thing that I have discovered. What is that, Doctor? I like them better than I like you. Bones was a central figure in the show's themes, often running as the emotional counter to Spock's detached rationale and logic. There's something disquieting about these creatures. Oh, don't tell me you've got a feeling. Number four, Captain Benjamin Franklin Hawkeye Pierce, MASH. Lucky winner to share the company of a gorgeous nurse. You want to raffle off a nurse? Is that what I said? Benjamin Franklin Pierce, also known as Hawkeye, was the main character in the series, providing the bulk of the storylines as well as much of the show's comedic genius. Frank, I happen to be an officer only because I foolishly opened an invitation from President Truman to come to this costume party. He always seems to be up for a good time, even though they're in the middle of a war. But a little death and destruction never stood between him and an attractive nurse. However, when necessary, he is one hell of a surgeon. We try to play par surgery on this course. Par is a live patient. Number three, Dr. Doug Ross, ER. Hey, I've been calling you all morning. Well, I'm, I've been busy. Considered by many to be the original Dr. McDreamy, this is the role that launched George Clooney into super stardom. You look as though you've had a very long, very hard day. I would like to take you out and see you relax just a little bit. One look at his turn as the tender-hearted but rebellious pediatrician, and you can see why. Plus, everyone loves a bad boy, but a bad boy doctor who loves children, while also being a womanizer and a serial dater, is a recipe for obsessed viewers. Don't you want to talk to someone before sex? Uh, not really, no. Number two, Dr. Douglas Doogie Hauser. Doogie Hauser, M.D. You want to go to jail? No, you'll be going to jail for criminal negligence. This man has a dislocated fracture of the femur and he's going to lose his leg unless I fix it right away. Now hold his torso down while I rotate his leg. Watching this show gave lots of preteens inferiority complexes. Got an unidentified body in bin number eight. Even money, it was probably someone under your care. Inspired to go into medicine after his father's expertise saved him from two bouts with leukemia. This child prodigy was obtaining his medical license while most kids were struggling with growth spurts and nocturnal emissions. That's it. Don't be afraid of intimacy. Could you girls crowd around him and look like you're conferring with him? No, you really don't have to do that. To add insult to injury, he worked as a surgeon while most teens were still trying to get to homeroom on time. Watching his exploits came with some envy, but also respect and admiration. I almost did die. I was so weak. I had to take this medicine that made me feel all pukey. And you know what else? I lost all my hair. Before we check the pulse of our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. There are women who are nine months pregnant out picking rice and the baby falls right out and starts to pick beside the mother. Hey, don't even think about it, Hurley. Don't even think it. Hurley, hey! Damn it! Well, there's a little redness. You might have a slight guitar coming on. So check out this bombshell. We're getting ready this morning, and Julia tells me she wants her breast done. If you're thinking conflict of interest, I'd like to volunteer my services. What's wrong with him, Leo? Well, to the untrained eye, he'd appear to be what we in the medical community call sleeping. But he is, in fact, in a diabetic coma, which could have been avoided by what we call eating. Number one, Dr. Gregory House, House, MD. Isn't treating patients why we became doctors? No, treating illnesses is why we became doctors. Treating patients is what makes most doctors miserable. He's the be-all, end-all of caustic medical geniuses. As head of diagnostic medicine at New Jersey's Princeton Plainsboro Teaching Hospital, House is oftentimes bested by his own brilliance. Plus, he suffers from an almost perpetually unpleasant personality. Six years times three weeks, you owe me better than four months. It's five o'clock, I'm going home. To what? Nice. It's not that he doesn't care, because he probably actually doesn't. It's that he needs to be right. 
His desire to properly diagnose a case is less about saving lives than it is about him being on top of his game. So because you respect her, you're going to let her die. I solved the case. My work is done. Do you agree with our list? Yes. Who's your favorite TV doctor? Hi, everybody! Hi, Hi Dr. Dr. Nick. Nick! For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Couldn't you just, you know, inject something right into his heart? I'd love to. But we have no way of knowing where the heart is. See, every human is different.